Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video for all of the new prospective medical students out there, the year 10s, the year 11s, the year 9s, the year 12s, anyone out there who wants to be a doctor. And disclaimer, I am a year 13. <laughs> so I probably shouldn't be wearing this, but even if it's like you don't know what you want to do, but you just like, you just see healthcare and it's just looking at you like, I want to do that. Like, you know, it's calling your name. Basically, I'm just going to be giving an overview of applying to medical school and all of that that you need to know for your upcoming few years. So you're saying, how, how does the year 13 have a stethoscope? I went to loads and loads and loads of different talks and events. So any um, prospective medics, I would definitely recommend just try to immerse yourself as much as possible with the medical community. So I'd say if you don't want your Instagram following to be like really closed, make another account, make a study account and just follow doctors and healthcare professionals and medical students and like everyone. Just follow as many people as you can and just kind of like network, get a LinkedIn. Maybe it's a bit early for that, but literally just try to expose yourself to lots of medical things, you know. And literally, I went to a talk um, in year 11 and it was like this lecture theatre and it was a really amazing event. And basically, they gave me the stethoscope because I was like engaging and asking questions. So yeah literally they were like you you're gonna get this stethoscope and obviously it's not the best quality but like it literally is a stethoscope and it works and it just shows that like they all of these people see it in us you know they want us to do well they want us to be the next generation and like just using all of the chances that we have because there's so many things going on and one of the things that pushed me to do this video was uh, actually there's loads of zoom meetings and the comments were really things like, oh, like, you know, can I, can I be a doctor? Da -da -da -da. Like, you know, that like young person that just doesn't really know what's going on. So I just wanted to make this video for those type of people who aren't really knowing anything. Like, you know, you want to be a doctor, but where'd you go from there? You know, uh, first things first, GCSEs. Um, so with this, I'd say, obviously, you just try to do as best as you can and try to get as many like nines eight sevens as you can people worry about their subjects but honestly it doesn't really matter that much like they'll be looking at the number of a's and a stars you have compared to the subjects so um i definitely say try to do triple science and all of that but even still if you don't you'll be fine and you know gccs aren't that aren't much of a problem you, you like you can you can redeem yourself if anything goes wrong and yeah don't worry too much about GCSEs but it's definitely a good time to try and do different things like Duke of Edinburgh where you can get some volunteering experience like in a care home and things like that um, so that's really good to just try to start from early you know so, um, so the summer from year 11 into year 12 I definitely say try this is when you should try to like start everything up like start your little instagram where you're talking to people and like finding all the events that are happening so yeah um obviously with with when you're applying to medical school it's always good to have a lot of experience that can be shadowing it can be working it can be volunteering all these kind of different things that you can do to show your interest and to show that you have a realistic view of what medicine is because honestly, like, you know, Grey's Anatomy, like all of these random shows, like they're not accurate. You know, watch Dr. Mike or someone like that saying how inaccurate they are and they glamorise things and romanticise things. But in real life, like I was there like really, really early with the doctors and literally just having that experience in a real situation is just so empowering to see like how it is like i was in there with the surgeries i was wearing the scrubs it's literally i was there from the morning to the afternoon and it was just crazy like you're literally wearing the scrubs you're talking to all the doctors and the nurses you're in the room you're like literally in there like you're in the action you're talking to the patients as they go in and it is literally just such an amazing opportunity to experience that firsthand and to stand there for that long and to just like feel how they're feeling eat lunch with them and be in the doctor's mess surrounded by all of these 
people that you want to be and be like and it's literally just so amazing to have work experience that being said there's um this pandemic going on so i've actually seen many many online work experience like websites and programs that have been made by developers and they're all like 3d like animated and it's literally so cool so literally like having technology these days is just so like empowering and amazing and i literally watch so many surgery videos like literally surgeons film like brain surgery and like you literally see like all of it all of it going on and they'll explain what's happening you can read the comments watch medical school vlogs literally just immerse yourself in all the things that you can see what it's really like to be um so as well as work experience another way you can kind of manifest that is volunteering so once everything's cleared up um i definitely recommend working in a care home and once you're old enough you can actually get a job working as a care assistant working in a care home so that's what i did over the summer and honestly that was so intense because like you're looking after real people that are literally like you're literally being a professional a care professional so it's great like um if i wasn't living with vulnerable people i would literally still be working that job now to like help with care homes and just work with people that need it and literally like you being so young is literally like it brightens their day and it's another thing i recommend for aspiring medical students and aspiring medical professionals is reading books literally reading is so insightful like imagine someone spent their whole career like living their life and then they just summarize all into one book like books are so so powerful and so touching and they can give you such a realistic portrayal of the lifestyle of that particular doctor so i definitely definitely recommend reading so most of the books i got were from the library because i'm not about to buy ten thousand books you know what i mean and like, i'd recommend pdfs and um ebooks e and things like that um because they can be quite expensive but the two that i do have in physical copy is this is going to hurt by adam k um and it's like the secret diaries of a junior doctor and it's so good to read because it's literally like he ended up quitting so it just shows how it's like it's no joke like this is a hard career and it's gonna be crazy like the things he goes into this it's really well written and will be good for like younger people to read as well if you're still quite young and then i ended up doing an epq um on medical ethics and medical research ethics so yeah even reading things like introductions and things like that will just help you to be you know immersed in the trade and the science and literally learn so much which you can use in your um personal statement and in your interviews because they'll definitely ask you loads of stuff about like this. uh especially for like this lockdown and all that i actually have this um human brain coloring book so it just has like anatomy and things that you can color in to learn the different parts of the body and um, just things like that that kind of put you in the mindset of a doctor of a medical student so that because it's like you're going to learn this eventually you know so why not just dabble in it now you know so now you've read all your books you've had some work experience da 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 now you're in year 12 what subjects so i went to quite a large sick form and literally if you'd ask anyone what subjects they were doing it was most likely mass chemistry and biology and like if they wanted to do medicine but to be real with you you do you do not have to take math you can take psychology physics sociology english anything like if you know that you're really passionate about a subject then why not take that and like think like you know, it's better for you to have like an a star in a random subject um as a random like third subject than have like a b in maths you know actually like whatever subjects you choose as long as you have chemistry and biology you're keeping your options very open and you'll be fine so another thing i would recommend is academic excellence you know so uh obviously you know like the senior maths challenge and the biology olympiad the chemistry olympiad poster competitions da 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 epqs i'd really recommend pushing yourself to do all of those kind of crazy academic things because as a medical student you're going to be like doing the most if you're doing a six-year course you're going to spend a year like doing a research project or 
getting a whole other degree so just having that kind of agility because you don't want to get your english skills your, your essaying skills you need to just kind of you know stay on it you know so yeah i'd recommend trying to push yourself into doing any of those kind of things one thing i think people didn't really emphasize enough when i was uh starting out was if you don't get three a's you're literally done for like <laughs> like those year 12 exams like try your absolute hardest to be getting three a's like literally that's on period like i for me i feel like i was literally doing the most like going here going there going to lectures my epq da, da, da. just aim as high as you possibly can like try your best to be the absolute best that you can be in that subject because that's what they want like you need to be on top of your game and for those year 12 mocks you need to be on it and you need to be getting the highest predictions you can so that you can apply to as many medical schools and you're not closing any of your doors okay so now it's like the summer and you've got entrance exams but basically you have the uk cat which is like an aptitude test and yeah it's literally like the schools will just cut you off if you don't have a score above a certain score which changes every year depending on the cohort so again just aim as high as you can get medified da, 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 da. keep on revising like on a computer to get used to all the shortcuts so then there's the bmat which has two sittings only and then that's like an actual written exam with lots of different sections but i haven't sat that one medical schools take the bmat more holistically but with the uk cat they literally just cut you off and won't read your personal statement or anything so be very wary of where you apply um, so with your personal statement, I was quite shocked to find out that, that some medical schools literally don't read your personal statement. So again, that's just showing that, you know, it's really about your grades and they don't really care. You know, it's like you feel this effort and da 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 da. Some medical schools don't um, really read personal statements, but still, they're definitely something you should put in a lot of effort for and da da da. Because um, if two students have the same grades, the same, they look the same on paper they'll read your personal statement to decide between the two then. If not, um, and they do read your personal statement, they will be using your personal statement in your interviews and asking you loads of questions about that. So even if you've written something really small, like, oh yeah, and this is going to hurt, I read about this pregnancy. They might say, oh, you read about pregnancy. What do you know about this, this, this? Or like, what do you think about this? And it's like, they want to see how you think and all of that, you know? You need to apply strategically. So I'd recommend going on the student room. It's a great resource. So some of the people on that are a bit intimidating, but you know, we ignore them and literally you can just find more, it's probably inaccurate um, information, but it's just more of a guide to see if if you're more likely to get into a certain place. Uh, so for example, like Newcastle uses it, the UCAT as a deciding factor um, more than others. So if you've got a really high UCAT, it would be a good idea to apply there, for example. So you can find loads of different things like that on the student room. So then you get the interview, the panel and MMI and panel interviews. So you'll find out which one they are. And then, you know, you can just read loads of books like this and just get loads of medical knowledge that you can use in your interviews. And yeah. So then you just get your three A's, you get a star, a, you get two A stars, A, you get three A stars, period. Then you've got your place on results day and you can happily go into medical school. You also obviously have to get immunizations and vaccinations and send in a DBS check, which is just like if you have criminal record, whatever, you have to pay for them. Um, but yeah, hopefully it has helped you to become closer to medicine and knowing what it's going to take to become a medical student. So yeah, I wish the best of luck to everyone watching. Um, it's especially important to remember that you can do this like, I know diversity isn't the best in higher education, but you can be the one to change that, you know, like aim high, try your hardest, don't let anyone hold you down for your life. You can do it. So please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.